Good morning and welcome to Rise and Shine Manitoba with Luna Bridget. I am so excited for today's show. So you know what? It may be uh, randomly <laughs> cloudy and snowy and looks like about to be stormy and blizzardy outside. But you know what? It's fun and bright and happy and shiny in here. And you know what? That's what matters the most is you find light wherever it is, even if it's not literally there. So, wherever you are, please grab your coffee mug and raise your coffee mugs and cheers with me as I say, rise and shine, Manitoba. Welcome back to Rise and Shine Manitoba. Oh, I love Monday mornings. Why? Because, well, I get to do this for a living and I get to smile and talk to you fine people for a living. <laughs> so before we get to our first guest with Trish from the Bloom Box, I would like to have a little quick kind of life lessons with Luna segment just because there's it's it's been a bit of a bit busy weekend and I kind of want, want to just want to address something. So for any of our viewers out there who, like me, love Big Brother Canada, um, it was kind of a somber weekend a little bit. A, a member of the Big Brother Canada just passed away over the weekend, um, gone too soon. She was only 38. Um, but I think the most somber, a, a little bit part of it, was the fact that um, she passed away by battling an eating disorder. And unfortunately, the eating disorder took a bit too much of a hold on her and now she, um, she's passed away. And so that kind of made me think a little bit just on how important mental health awareness is right now. This is a crazy time to be living in right now. There's so many things in the universe happening that's out of our control. And it all, <laughs> little things like this kind of gives us a reminder to take care of ourselves like when i when i've said in previous broadcasts that i'm a mental a huge mental health advocate and that i firmly believe that we need to take care of our minds as equally as we do our bodies i wasn't just meaning to be cheesy when i said that i meant that legitimately where yes we need to make sure that physically we're healthy and following all of the procedures that we are you know have to do right now but we also need to take care of our minds and not even just doing the self-care, but also learning to be a bit more compassionate and loving towards other people because you absolutely never know what someone is dealing with. You never know what's going on in their heart. You never know any possible struggles that you have. And so just like Nick, Nikki Graham over the weekend, it's a hard time right now. And so I have a challenge for all of our wonderful, wonderful viewers watching. If, if you can think of say a really rough day that you had, obviously not shared out loud, but just in your mind, think of kind of a rough day that you had and just think about how, how, how better, how much better that would have been if one person did one nice thing for you that day. So you could have had the worst day in the universe, but you'll never know how that may have changed if just one person smiled at you or just one person opened the door for you or let you go first at the four-way stop sign. Just those little simple things. You, you never know just how much one little simple act of kindness can affect your life and those around you. So my challenge for all of our wonderful viewers watching today is try one, one, once a day. Do one kind, selfless, selfless, <laughs> one kind, selfless thing a day and just see how much you were transformed as a person. And then by default, how much that'll spread to all those, to everyone else around you. So that is my little mental health tidbit of the day. 
And so after this quick commercial break from Fabric Land, we are going to talk with Trish from the Bloom Box for our flower power segment. I'm so pumped. So please don't go anywhere. Stay where you are. And we'll be right back on Rise and Shine Manitoba after this very quick commercial break from Fabric Land. Welcome back to Rise and Shine Manitoba with Luna Bridget. So I am so excited for our next segment. We have Trish from the Bloom Box. So good morning, Trish. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. How are you doing? I'm, I'm very good, thanks. My daughter's having her morning cheerio. So if you, so for you or any viewers, if you, he, if you hear around a toddler cooing, it's just my daughter watching a cartoon on my phone while having cereal. So because we are test. women, we are women in business and yes. we need to multitask yes. and be mothers yes. and work at the same time. Yes, I love that. <laughs> yes. Empowering mother, business, woman, multitask. I mean heck we gave birth so we can multi obviously multitask. So exactly. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us on our Rise and Shine Manitoba segment. So let's get started. Yes. So I see you have some beautiful colory, uh, colory, I think colorful scenery. There you go. Colorful scenery surrounding you and some beautiful flowers. So what are some fresh flowers of the week? Well, we're in spring right now. So there's a lot of nice spring things available that are, that are not available at other times of the year. So oh, cool. popular, uh, the most popular one that is on the only available really at, in the springtime is tulips, actually. Tulips is one of the most oh. popular and it's only available usually commercially in the spring like they're they're pretty there's some growers now that have them available in the fall and at christmas but really they are a spring dominant flower and they are okay. popular if you don't mind asking why is it dominant in the spring like what makes a tulip pardon me more of a spring dominant flower because that's its season um, for us here in the spring and I guess okay. everywhere else in their springs. So tulip is a spring flower. It's one of the first flowers to poke through the snow kind of thing. Aww. So for, for us in Manitoba, tulips are really, really important because it's really significant for us. To, we're getting rid of that stupid winter that we've just dealt right. with through however long so like the first first few crocuses and tulips and irises those bald tuberous things that poke through the soil and show us something green like uh, i don't know about y'all but when i see that i'm just yeah <laughs> you know i need to see spring so that's why um trish it was a little bit choppy i might you're frozen on me. there you are you're back <laughs> The internet. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, I'm sorry. I did not quite catch. Uh, uh, was it choppy on your end, or was it just my end that was a bit choppy? No, you, you froze a couple of times and then you disappeared. But now you're back and you're perfect. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And and so are yourself. So I heard something about in Manitoba, a spring yeah. flowers, tulips, and then the it went a, a then, little bit. Of, and then the <laughs> well just we're just really excited to see them here in manitoba because they are the first sign of spring you know like they're the first thing to yeah. poke through the through the snow yeah. and show that it's spring so it's significance for us as well as the fact that it's a pretty flower that comes in many colors it is very short-lived though so um yeah. tulips you know you don't get your usual um seven days out of them they're like about a five day as far okay. as longevity goes, but we still love them even if they aren't long lasting because again, it's that first sign of spring yeah. that we're after. It's that feeling we get when we see them well, that we want. <laughs> so I guess one more quick question on that because you mentioned that they are the first flower to kind of poke out of the snow, which made me think of, it was a beautiful weekend, which is fabulous. Um, but to, no, but today being Monday, there's well over the weekend I noticed there was a 15 centimeter forecast for today of, of snow, and then 10 again for tomorrow. So 
what does that mean for all of the flowers that have just begun to blossom? Um, well, the, the, there's zones uh, equated with many of these things. And because tulips and irises, crocuses, because they're spring flowers, they can deal with a little bit of okay. frost and snow. Like they do actually, a lot of those push up through snow. So they can deal with that last little blast of cold. Uh, you'll find most people don't hit garden centers to put out their perennials and annuals um, until about May long weekend because okay. that's when we're at the point where we're past the chance of frost around here. Yeah. So that tends to be popular for planting. But for tulips, irises, crocuses, all those things, like they don't mind a little bit of cold. They'll be able to deal with this um, onslaught <laughs> or what we call right? this fourth, fourth winter fourth maybe fifth winter um uh, it's uh, when you said that i think of lord of the rings and fourth and third breakfast so that's yeah. what <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. So I guess I guess last question of the morning. Um, what are some of Bloombox's best sellers? Oh well, okay. So one of our signature moves around here just makes all of our flowers a bestseller, and that is that we put a little bit of sparkle on just about Aww. every flower or bouquet that goes out of here. You don't have to have it, but it is one of our signature moves and people do really like it. We have an aerosolized, really, Aww. really fun glitter and we can spray it on our flowers and it makes them twinkle and look a little bit dewy. Oh no, it's Cereal. Yeah, so they look great. And then for little kids and anybody who's like me, a magpie who might like rainbow <laughs> things, that, you know, you just sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle a little bit. And all of a sudden it's a magic flower. So I, I love that. I love it. I thought we were going to lose connections. I was like, oh, no, but then it came back. So we're good. But yes, no, I, I love that. A little bit of a little sprinkly pixie dust. So everything. I so then that makes all of our flowers. That makes our flowers that come from our shop special. But, you know, we oh, do have some signature arrangements that are very popular that we sell off of our website a lot uh we have um these guys are really cool i don't know if you've seen these oh that's beautiful it's oh it's, it's a it's, rainbow oh. so we sell a lot of these they're very popular with with uh customers oh. they are they are dyed that Stunning. way yeah so they split the stem into oh. three little pieces Aww. tiny little pieces and then they and then they uh they insert dye and the flower drinks it so all the petals turn different colors called wow. rainbow roses so I those love that. yeah they're a little pricey for a single flower but they're so cool so cool <laughs> i will have to remember those when i want my next bouquet because yeah yep. I, those are absolutely stunning and honestly a bit more money but you pay for quality you know, well, for the work quantity, that right? So, it, right, just like anything else, somebody had to take each one of those roses and cut each stem and make sure each piece was injected with the right color of dye, and that's a lot of work and a lot of labor and a lot of hours. So, the cost, of course, is a little oh, higher. Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, thank you so much. And for all of my stuff as an import. Uh, uh, back awesome good uh yeah maybe it's maybe it's monday morning maybe it's the soon to be storm but yes thank you so much for coming in today it's as usual it's been an absolute delight talking with you and we will talk to you again soon on rise and shine manitoba with trish from always bringing the bloom back yes always bring the bright and shiny smiles to our monday morning with all of your beautiful flowers so thank you again trish for stopping by and you have a I have some morning food. yeah <laughs> You too. Yeah. Bye. Well, thank you so much, Trish, for coming in. And we have so many other amazing new segments and <laughs> coming up after the quick break. So we will be right back with Rise and Shine Manitoba after this quick commercial break. Think Systems Beauty College is a little bit unique in respect to the way we teach our program. We don't do so much uh, structure and learning and block teaching. Everybody can move along at the pace that suits them. Well, it's a combination of being both independent and dependent, which I like because you have a little bit of both. Um, and it makes it fun because you can go on your own and create new styles and, and whatnot. And, yeah. <laughs>
Welcome back to Rise and Shine Manitoba with Luna Bridget. Yeah, sorry about our little Wi-Fi, little technical errors. I mean, it is snowing outside, so I would not be surprised if I'm not the only person with uh, a little bit cheesed off internet today. Um, but yeah, we're good now. So that's 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 the main part. So we are going to have the farm report coming up next. And right before we get into that, I just want to give a little quick small announcement. So, oh, we have a segment that's probably, oh, I, I am looking forward to this so, 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 so much. It is our shop local segment. And so essentially, I want to give a little quick announcement on that. So essentially what our shop local segment is, is we want to spotlight small towns and small businesses and take care of small towns and small businesses and promote all of you wonderful, amazing viewers watching to please shop local. So we are currently on the hunt to find small towns and small businesses to spotlight that want to partner with us on this crazy fun journey. So if you own a small business and, and if you are part of a small town, listen up. What we are wanting to do is essentially partner with the whole town and as many businesses who want to participate. So we want to spotlight the town it's, it's it, and, as, and that town as a unique tourist destination. And then all of its wonderful businesses as all of the spotlighted businesses of that town as must see places to come check out. So please don't be shy. If you own a business, if you live in a small town or know of an amazingly cool small town that should be spotlighted, please let me or us know. I would love to partner with you and take your business to the next level. So let me know. And so lastly, before we're going to take a quick commercial break from Evolve Green. And then right after the break, we're going to have the, our usual Harry Siemens in with the farm report. So please don't go away. Stay where you are. Maybe get a, a refill of coffee in the commercial break. But that's it. Because Rise and Shine Manitoba with Luna Bridget will be right back after this quick break from Evolve Green. Why go solar? It's not just for the environment, although that is a great reason. Did you know that when you install your new solar plant, you are only paying seven cents per kilowatt? That's right, seven cents. Solar is now cheaper than buying electricity, 25% cheaper than buying it from Manitoba Hydro. Going solar is different from any other investment you will make in your life, as you will retain the value on your roof. Solar does not depreciate like other investments do, and unlike a GIC, your investment will start paying you from day one. And when you choose to sell your home, well, you will get the cost of the solar back as this investment rarely depreciates. When choosing solar, look for high-end products like microinverters with 10 to 25 year warranties. Make sure your installation is done by a professional. We are Evolve Green and we are celebrating 12 years in the industry and can help you put your roof to work for you. Ask also about your options like battery backup for when the grid fails, and how about solar heaters to get rid of snow buildup? Are you a farm or a business? Did you know that your solar is a 100% tax write-off? Yes, that's right. You can write off all the cost for the solar in the year you purchased it. This is a perfect investment for any business. In Manitoba, the portion a resident customer sells to Hydro is also a tax write-off in the first year. Farms pay no PST on solar systems. We build, design, and supply the best in solar power for both on and off the grid. For experts you can trust, call or email Evolve Green today. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca. Welcome back to Rise and Shine Manitoba with Luna Bridget. So coming up next, we have a very familiar face. I love chatting with him every Monday morning. He always brings a smile to my face and I hope all yours too. So we have Harry Siemens with the Farm Report brought to you by Wolf Enterprises. So hello and good morning, Harry. How are you doing on this cloudy day? <laughs> well, you know what? We're doing absolutely great. I just saw a text from Mayor Martin Harder of Winkler saying, this is what we 
have been waiting for moisture. Let's not make sure it stops for any time soon. We need about three inches of rain. That means about 30 in, you know, inches of snow in order to get wow. us back to uh, uh, you where, the, where the streams can actually do some flowing. So, you know what? No it, kidding. It, yep, you bet. It's a, it's a good thing for, for, for us right now in, in Manitoba to get the snow. Well, honestly, it kind of makes a little bit of sense because I only found out over the weekend that there is actually a fire ban in in Brandon, which kind of makes sense because it's been a very unusual dry dry, dry spring and all of our snow abruptly melted. So, with the uh, with at least the current fire ban, what has how is that how has it affected farmers? Well, the the fire ban uh, doesn't so much affect farmers so much in spring. You know, I mean, it's, okay. you always have to you always have to be more careful. You have to be more careful because uh, there's more uh, stubble around. You know, we, we, we do farming more uh, minimum to zero till, which leaves more stubble around. But but for the most okay. part, uh, it's not such a big deal. You know, if this is in fall when you're harvesting, you know, combines burn and, and crops burn and those kinds of things. And so for now, we're just waiting for that, you know, for the snow to fall and then for it to dry up enough so that farmers can get back on the fields and plant their grains. But for the most part, yeah, it's a matter of watching. Like I, I remember on Easter weekend, we had a, a, a small gathering at my brother-in-law's farm and he just yeah. telling us right behind the, you know, their, their yard, the creek uh, and railroad track uh, where the grass was, was burning for the simple reason. Oh my goodness. Just to, yeah, the fire department was out there. I mean, they were getting calls oh. all oh. over the place. Uh, you bet. Uh, and those kinds of things are, 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 obviously a, a problem but when the farmer is wow. actually working it's it's they're just more careful you know you're not throwing matches mm-hmm. out you're not doing anything like that you're just making sure that you keep all the all the known sparks and flames uh, <laughs> covered as much as you possibly can well no kidding especially just like with like if there's like a gust of breeze all it takes is a little bit of breeze and to catch say i don't know like a burning garbage because i know farmer i know people on acreage just do burn garbage because there isn't the garbage collector so all it takes is just a gust of wind and it can essentially start a wildfire so i guess the bright side to that is as much as none of us probably would ideally like to have more snow in mid-april i mean let's be honest here Aside from that, though, it kind of almost acts as a bit of a solution because, like you said, it, it's like it's essentially it's free water, and so hopefully that might help farmers out, out a little bit if we get, like you said, about twenty to twenty-five centimeters in the next day, day or two. Yeah, oh yes, absolutely. I mean, right now, in order for the crop to to germinate, I mean, farmers have planted into dry ground, so that means that that crop does not germinate. The seed does not germinate until there's moisture and that's why we need moisture to come down not only the first uh, one inch you know we need it to come down because i've heard farmers uh, who one farmer at nipawa you know he he dug a hole to put in a post and he went down three feet before he really found any measurable moisture so that's my really goodness. really oh really gosh. dry all of our potatoes most of the potatoes at least for processing chips and so forth and they they can only do uh uh, under contract with McCain's and and so forth, if they have a uh, water to irrigate, and so you know that's a, another challenge. You know we need those irrigation ponds to be yeah. full in order for farmers to be able to irrigate, and they get their water from streams that flow. Well, we had no runoff up until now, but we're we're you know we need another couple of inches in order to see that runoff. Well, no kidding, especially I mean. If we're getting going to have, like, say, plus seventeen, plus twenty in the next week or so, well, then it won't take long for all of this, all of this snow. <laughs> no to shoveling. Melt. No, no so shoveling. It kind of leads me to another question then. So, if essentially, if spring, if spring crops are kind of delayed a little bit, ideally, in order to not delay um, harvest production, when do farmers need to have their spring crops plowed and ready to go like what's the deadline at the very at the very latest to get them finishes the prep finished you know that's a very good question uh, many people many farmers are what i called earlier is into minimum till some zero till where they don't need to do any tilling in spring they just drill it in but the latest date you know what uh, 
every year it, it can change depending on what the weather is. But ideally, you know, we, we start to plant around May 1st, May 15th, June the okay. 1st. And, and once we get into the middle, third week of June, if you haven't planted by then, then it's more or less too late. Then you're starting to put in what we call cover crops. That's a, that's okay. a crop that will keep the, fo- the soil from drifting when the wind blows. And invariably it can happen, you know, it can, it can help with the cattle production because, uh, you know, it seems like uh, more and more with the lack of moisture, we've had, uh, the, you know, the hay and the bales and the straw is all becoming more expensive in order to haul it to where the cattle are. And so we need that moisture and cover crops will do that. So, and that makes sense. And so I guess kind of um, to, like one of the last questions of the segment, um, for like, like farmers obviously have the, like, the professional equipment to add the moisture and maybe compensate for lack of rain or moisture. But for people that just grow their own crops at home and don't necessarily have the same resources as professional farmers do, what are some at home gardening tips that you can give to help compensate for this lack of moisture? <laughs> Well, you know what? There's there's actually very little. I mean, we instead of compensating for the lack of moisture, you try to conserve. So you don't okay. you, you don't you don't want to move the the soil. You know, if you're going to plant something, plant it into whatever moisture is there. And if you because if you turn the soil, uh, then it dries out whatever moisture is there. So so there isn't okay. any thing that we can do as far as adding moisture other than irrigation with potatoes but irrigation is first of all it's got to be set up secondly you have to have a source of water and thirdly it's expensive to do it's not it's not a cheap so most farmers unless they are told to as far as the crop they grow and the processor that buys it uh, will not irrigate but uh, so so but at home you know what the same thing don't you know if you're going to plant don't till the soil until you ready to plant and then start to plant well that even makes sense too because then it's like i i guess that conserving like the little water you have because i I, i'm no farmer but just through common sense if you have essentially layers and layers of soil with grass on top if you if or 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 whatever soil whatever if you turn that up you're right then you're kind of disrupting the natural moisture in there so you're right unless you're just evaporating just about to put the seeds in you're essentially removing what little moisture you have left <laughs> you know what do we do we do this so long enough you might be a farmer hey no i might i mean i i, I love fruits and veggies and you know just by talking with you i might become i might become a farmer in the next six months who knows <laughs> yeah <laughs> who knows so, so then i guess in our remaining time just because i always i always love hearing your wisdom in, in, in our remaining time, what are your final um, final thoughts you'd like to give our viewers this morning? Well, you know what? Uh, if you're concerned about the snow, you know what? We need the moisture. We need the moisture big time in, in Manitoba. So that's the, the first thing. The second thing is, as you said right off the bat, you know what? Mental illness is a real challenge for many people, especially during this COVID time. I had a father who had uh, what we then called a nervous breakdown. And I oh, remember what, what it did, for, you know, yeah, what it did for us, you know. So, but, but keep challenging other people. Keep saying, hello, how are you doing? But stay long enough to find out how they're actually doing. Yes, and actually care enough to hear their answer. <laughs> That's exactly it. Oh, well, well, thank you, Harry. Honestly, I really do love talking to you every, every, every Mondays. You're always just this big, bright, happy smile. And you bring <laughs> light and joy when it's cloudy and white outside. <laughs> Absolutely. You have a great well, thank day. Thanks so much for talking to me and have a great Monday morning. Yeah. Bye. 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 So thank you again um, to Harry for our weekly farm report brought to you by Wolf Enterprises. So please do not go away. Rise and shine Manitoba still has more to come after this quick break from System, System Speedy College. I think Systems Beauty College is a little bit unique in respect to the way we teach our program. We don't do so much uh, structure and learning and block teaching. Everybody can move along at the pace that suits them.
marching. Everybody can move along at the pace that suits them. If they can move faster, they do so. Therefore, learning everything earlier and getting more practice in all segments of hairstyling as opposed to just being stuck in one section for a certain period of time. So we try to accommodate all the different learning styles. Welcome back to Rise and Shine Manitoba with Luna Bridget. I've been having so much fun this morning. Like I said, I tr I, tr I truly love Monday mornings because I, I get to just talk to you people for a living, which is absolutely wonderful. So our last kind of segment of uh, the show, I would like to just kind of talk to you about advertising a little bit. Just going to give a little bit of a quick announcement. So for any businesses out there, what I, I, we are looking for advertisers and what I'd like to do is build a segment around you and your business. So rather than kind of quasi fit a bit a business into uh, an already predetermined segment, what I try to do instead is look at your business, look at the unique qualities that make it stand out, and also look at the unique qualities about you as the the business owner as well, and then essentially work a segment around you and your business to spotlight your business, to personalize your, your business, and to essentially make your business into a TV segment. And so that's why I, I use the word partnership, because I like to partner with the people that I work with so that they and both both of us work together and that it's their business that shines and that it's their business that gets spotlighted. So thank you so much for tuning in. I've had so much fun. And like I said, if you own, if you own a business, please let me know. And I would love to partner with you. So as we sign off, please grab your coffee mug and raise your coffee mugs and cheers with me as I say, rise and shine Manitoba. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day and stay safe. Bye-bye. Why go solar? Solar is better than ever. Our revolutionary design and inverter equipment with the latest in solar panel technology for the ultimate in-home and business security. That's right. I said security. Grid security and security of your home are linked. Fortify your future today with a battery backup system no maintenance, quiet running. Did you know in Manitoba, grid connected, off grid and battery backup systems are 100% right off in the year you purchase for any company or farm. Do you want to back up your internet, keep your tills running and the lights on? We can install a system that is right for you with battery backup fully capable of taking on all those essential loads and keeping you running. When you call our experts at Evolve Green, ask about getting your free energy audit today. Call or email today to find out what system works best for you. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca. Also, be sure to check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca.